Hello everyone, good afternoon, and welcome back to the second session of Clinical Management of Impacted Teeth. So yesterday we stopped at creating the space for the impacted tooth. Today we'll talk about the second step, and the second step is to move the impacted tooth mesial distally. And usually we do this one either with a nitric uh, close coil, with a power chain, with a zinc string. I will show you a case where we use a nitric close coil. So you put a nitric close coil to bring the impacted tooth backward. But you need to remember, in physics, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So the molar will try to come forward. So we need to add more anchorage to this molar by using a TPA. And I also like to use a stop arch wire. And this will minimize how much movement we have from this molar. You can also use a power chain, as I, we said earlier. Here's a little trick. If you use a close coil, sometimes I like to attach a close coil with a long ligature wire. So when the patient comes to your office, you don't have to place a new ligature wire every time. But what you need to do is just to tighten this ligature a little bit, and this will activate that close coil. Now, if the tooth is impacted buccally, we have a challenge here. And that challenge is, you don't want this canine to come down and interfere with the lateral and the central, because this can cause root resorption. So what I'd like to do is to do high traction. You want to move this canine first horizontally and then vertically. And the way how I do it is, you get a 16 stainless steel arch wire, you bend a vertical loop, and then you track this tooth backward. Here's another case where 16 stainless steel, you expose, and you're trying to bring this tooth away from the central and the lateral. Now, remember, we talked about this where you want to bring this tooth backward. With the introduction of the mini implants, these mini implants are really life savers. And what I mean by, let's look into this case. Here we have a patient, he has a packet upper right three, short roots upper right two, upper right one. And then if you do it the traditional way where you put braces, you might cause some more root resorption here. So with the introduction of mini implants, what we are doing right now is placing a mini implant, do the exposure, and try to move this tooth backward. Move it away from the lateral and the central. Why? Because you want to minimize any possibility of root resorption of the uh, central and the lateral. I activate it with a zinc string. As the tooth is backward, then if you feel that you have enough clearance, enough safety to bring this tooth down, then you put braces. And that's how we finish the case. So start, progress, the canine is back, braces, finish, 23 months in total treatment, active treatment with braces, 17 months. Now, after we brought the tooth backward, we want to bring it where? Occlusally, correct? And that's the third step. And the most efficient way to do it, especially if you have a palatally impacted canine, is to use a ballista loop. And the ballista loop will provide enough force with the minimal side effect. Usually I use a, for a 14 or 16 stainless steel. In extreme cases, you can do also 18, but usually I don't like to use 18. Here's an example. You put the arch wire, you, you bend it down, okay? And you need to make sure that you don't figure eight the brackets, okay? The elastic or the brackets. Otherwise, you'll have a lot of friction and the wire can't move. What I like here to use also is to use self ligating brackets. You will have almost no friction and this loop can move very freely. Now, usually I bend it 90 degree. If you want to activate it, you can also bend it a little bit more outward. This will provide more uh, force to bring the stool down. Here's a case, impacted canine. Now, remember, step one, create space. 
Then we we'll try to bring this tooth downward. This is the ballista. You watch how we engage the tooth. And remember, the ballista has two vectors. It will bring it down. It will bring it also a little bit to the buckle. Watch. The tooth is in the palate, but the outcome, you can see that the tooth start to erupt from the buccal bone, which is excellent. So you can adjust the length of this loop and to try to bring the tooth more buccally. And this is toward the end of the treatment as the tooth came out. You can also add to the ballista a close quid if you want to bring the tooth down while working on the space to make more space. You need to teeter the adjacent teeth. That's another trick. Or you can also bring this tooth. If you don't want to use a ballista, you can use a power chain. But you usually use a power chain if the tooth is closer to the occlusion. Sometimes, if, you use a, if I use a ballista and I still need to bring this tooth a little bit backward, I can also add, keep the horizontal vector while I'm using the ballista to bring this tooth down. Now let's say that the 18 or the 16 stainless steel wire was not strong enough where you want to add like class 2 elastic or you want to or you want to maintain the arch shape. So what I will do, we'll use a 1925 stainless steel and then I bend the ballista and I solder it to the arch wire. Like this is the case. And then you put the stainless steel arch wire with the ballista, you activate it, tooth is coming down. And again, as we said earlier, with the ballista, you can only use it with palatally impacted teeth. If they are impacted, I'm sorry, we're going to go one more backward. Now, if they are on the palate, what you need to watch is, you need to watch for the gingival attachment. This is a patient, let me go backward, she has an impacted upper left three. It's right above the upper right, upper left central, upper left uh, lateral. That's a cone beam. And you can see that the whole 